Hey guys, DRS211 here to give you part 3 of the speedrun tutorial series on Dragon Warrior 1 for GBC. So if you remember where we left off, we had just gotten the choker, used our strength seed and mystic nut, and then uh, took a warp wing out of the castle. So just doing a recap of the items, we've got an herb, we've got the choker, and we've pretty much got nothing else. We do have the equip the iron shield and everything we need to there though. So the, the thing to note is the herb. Usually we'd like to have like 3 or 4 at this point. We got a little bit unlucky in the cave, so we don't. Um, that's not the most important part. I mean, you should be able to make it to the next section without an issue. But having one herb means that you should probably try to conserve your MP a little bit more than you might otherwise. So that's going to make your decisions on who to fight and when to fight when we're going to Remuladar kind of important. So you notice we're taking the route that we did at the start of the game over to Cole, except this time we're going south. We're going to go through the cave and, and go down to Remuladar. So we fought the Magidraki there. You could run just as easily. You could also decide to fireball. If I had a little more MP, I might fireball there, but chose to attack, attack just for that. So you might have also noticed in the items, we did not have a torch. That's actually strategic because of the rock cave we needed it there. So we're going to do a bonk route here. So you're just going to go down, all the way down until you hear a bonk like that. Then you're going to go right, down, right, down, take one step up, and then all the way to the left. So, a magician, another time we just decide to fight. So, but the bonk route's not too hard. If you're not feeling confident in it, you can always go pick up a torch since you're just learning. Uh, once you get a little more into the game, more experience, you're just going to use the bonk route here. So, we just use the herb to get up to max HP. A lot of the enemies here can do uh, quite a bit of damage to you, so you always want to stay at max HP after every single fight. Uh, obviously, you can like withhold one or two HP, but anything more than like four or five damage, you do need to heal. It actually is that important. Uh, you'll see why when we fight someone like Wolf probably later on. So, Skeleton and Hard, you could decide to run or to fireball him there. Far two fireballs are going to kill him. I chose to run, which did not pay off. Same way with Scorpion. Uh, he got a couple of attacks in on me. But it it's kind of luck of the draw. You could just easily fireball, but we're really trying to conserve MP because we had to use our last herb right there. Oh, and now we fought a wolf. Here you notice why why I said we need to stay at max HP because he can realistically, he probably could two-shot us as low as HP as we are, especially since we're not level 6, but we got lucky there. So we got to level 6. We're going to heal up again with our last heal, and now we've got no mana, so now we just have to run from everything and kind of hope that we get good luck here. Um... If I get into two fights and I can't run, I'm probably going to die. Uh, but I'm close enough, I should be okay, and especially if I don't fight a wolf, I should be alright there as well. Um, skeletons aren't too scary, they're going to take four or five hits, we should be able to run by then. So here we're going to go get keys, we're also going to get the uh, defense seed and gold out of the vases, out of the vases up at the top. Uh, one advanced strat you can use if you have MP and you didn't just use all of it like I did, is that there's actually a, a thing called a threat counter in the game. So every step you take, you increase the threat counter. Once your threat counter gets to a threshold, you get into a fight. So that includes any steps you take in towns. And as you notice, we're taking a lot of steps in the town right here. So that means as soon as we exit to the left after getting our keys, that we could go to the right, get into a fight, and then come back in. That's a good way to get a little bit of experience pretty quickly. Uh, we are going to try to get to level 7 on the next grind, so we do want the extra experience. Unfortunately, we don't have any MP, we <laughs> have really low health, so we're just going to take the one step to the left and walk back into town. You could get unlucky and get into an encounter on this one step, but it's highly unlikely, even with you building up the threat counter in town. But, that's a, again, that's an advanced strat. If you don't feel confident, just go to the left, go to the right, and, and come back into town. So, now we're going to go down, we're going to get this life acorn out of the chest right here, and then we're going to go up to our shops. Uh, the thing we're going to do here is we're going to sell the choker, uh, and a couple other items. The other items are just for freeing up space. The choker is for making money. So once we sell the choker, and I miss this menu, I, I seriously think I've never gotten it on the first try to go sell here. <laughs> so don't worry about it. But we sell the club, the cloth armor, and then the choker. Now we have enough money for the steel sword. Go buy the steel sword, and we're good to go. That's the weapon you're going to use throughout the game until you get the lotus sword at the very end. Um, so also go into the menu, use your defense seed and life acorn, because we're going to fill up all the item slots here. So, uh, if you notice we're out of herbs, and the things I do is that I always try to have at least one herb, a torch, and then I buy my warp wings. You buy one torch, two war warp wings, and max out on herbs here. You do that because then it puts your warp wings in the same spots at the very bottom right uh, of your item menu. And that helps just because you know you can instantly go to the right, use a warp wing, and get out. Just like we're going to do here. 
So that's just like a strategic thing that you can do to save like, you know, a second or two basically. Just anything that's muscle memory and consistent is usually more efficient. So we're going to go raid the, the vault here, as we call it. Uh, you notice that we were basically maxed out on items, so we do need to spend our items every single time here. Um, got that, got the agility seed. The key we already spent, so we didn't need to uh, use anything to get that, and got gold. That gold's important because you need that to, in order to get the chain mail in the next town we're about to go into, Garenham. So make sure you pick that up. In fact, if you miss the vault, it's actually kind of bad because you're going to miss both the life acorn that you need to get, get here in a second and the money to buy the chain mail. So we're going to max out on keys again. Then we're going to go to the right here and we're going to go uh, get one, a life acorn, and two, the sunstone. Sunstone is an important key item for later in the game. So once we get to the life acorn, uh, we're still maxed out on items, so we're going to go and use the agility seed. Uh, hope for a good roll. If you get a 3, you're in great shape because you're probably going to be able to outspeed uh, the Dragon Lord at the very end of the game. But uh, you take whatever you get here. It's not that big of a deal. You can work around it. Use a Life Acorn as well because you're just about to grab the Sunstone out of this chest. And now a speed tip that we do here. You normally have to talk to this guy. If you just warp wing to the start, you can skip the text dialog. So that's just a little bit faster way of getting out of there. Now we're going to go uh, north and then... Uh, west and we're gonna head up to Garenham. So uh, we do have the steel sword so we hit really hard but a lot of the enemies in this in Garenham like hit very very hard. Uh, you need the chain mail here like otherwise you're gonna get get wrecked pretty hard instantly. So because that's even on the first couple floors there's some very tough enemies and once you get to the higher level floors you have some enemies who can basically two shot you. So it's very important you get that chain mail and also uh, you're going to heal, so we've got maxed herbs, you want to heal with your actual heal spell every single time in here. Uh, we want the herbs for later on, whenever we go on the golem walk. So, um, a lot of the talk is going to be prepping you for the golem walk. We're going to stay at the end, because we definitely need the MP and the HP. You should be by level at level 6 by now. If you're not, um, you maybe should have like grinded out a little bit at Rimuladar, but it's also okay if you're not, you can, you can make up for it. But, see, we got the chain mail, now we're going to go into uh, Garen's tomb. So, just follow up this path, take the hidden uh, path at the very top of this, and enter the cavern. So, one thing to prepare you for is Golem Walk, which is coming up just after this. The main goal of getting into Garen's tomb is to get the Shiny Harp and level 7, and it's specifically in that order. Uh, that won't always be the order in which you get them, but those are specifically what you're looking to get out of Garen's tomb. If you get the shiny heart but not level 7, you can make up for it by just battling later on. If you get to level 7 but not the harp, uh, you have to go back through this entire thing, go buy another torch because you don't have one, and it's just a hassle. So uh, that's usually where anybody who's done the run for a while, that's where they'll reset if they don't get to the harp here. But if you get the harp and you're not level 7, you can, you can kind of make up for it. Uh, battles are just as easy to get out of Garen's Tomb as they are in Garen's Tomb. So we're going to head up, and we're going to go grab the life acorn, um, a key, and then some gold. And I save the life acorn until I have to heal, uh, because you are going to fight some enemies who get attacks off on you, and you need to heal at some point. So that's a good time to use it. Uh, you do want to use it before you heal. Often I will mess up and heal first. For, remember I have the life acorn and go use it, though. So... However uh, however you do it, it really doesn't matter. It's only 4 or 5 HP, so it's probably not going to make the difference in life or death anyway. But we do fight everyone in here, because like I said, we're trying to get to level 7. Um, ideally, we get to level 7, we get the Shiny Harp, and then we do another uh, 3 or 4 fights. I actually do 5 for mine, because I'm a little more risk-averse as far as the Golem Walk goes. Um, but we want to be set up on the Golem Walk to get to level 8 before we get to Golem. And you also want to do this while saving as much MP as possible for the actual golem fight. So that's where I spend a little bit more time here, uh, even though it would be optimal to get to uh, level 8 on the, on the walk itself, but I'd rather play a little more cautious. I say that I was a little risky getting my HP that low, but not a big deal. Also, I just forgot the life acorn, but as you see, it's 4 HP. It's not that big of a deal. I'm not going to heal up to, to mess with it. But the enemies on the first couple of floors are pretty straightforward. You're going to see the skeletons, you're going to see the poltergeists, uh, things like that. Uh, outside of anybody who does a fireball, nobody's going to hit you for more than 5 damage as the skeleton did there. So there's no real risk of dying here. Uh, 
Always make sure you have enough to survive at least one fireball, but that's really it. So next we're going to go through this part of the map. This is pretty straightforward. Same kind of enemies on floor two. Um, yeah, Metal Scorpion, you can just fireball him twice. No big deal. But once you get to basement three, you want to stay as close to full health as possible. And that's really for one enemy in particular. Like, there's a several enemies that could two-shot you. Uh, Wolf Lord is a big one. Druin can put you to sleep. And uh, that's kind of a hassle to deal with because then he can just... It's up to RNG to see when you wake up. This guy's the scariest. Uh, Dead Knight is terrifying because he can two-shot you and you really can't do anything about it. You just have to flee and really hope that you can get away. Because even with fireballs, you need to cast three fireballs. And since he can two-shot you, that's not that effective. So we've got Wolf Lord right here. I actually saved one fireball and hoped that I would uh, kill him in two hits. I didn't get it, did not get a good strength roll, so that was rather unfortunate. I did get to level 7 though, so that's perfect. All I need to do is stay healed up, not die, and get to the shiny harp. So, cast my heals, got to full health, and now I'm just going to continue the walk going down to the next floor. Uh, there's four floors that you have to go through, and on the fifth floor the shiny harp is right there. It's only a few steps, and it's actually quite a low encounter rate, uh, so you're likely to get to the shiny harp as long as you get to that bottom floor. As you can see, we start getting to fight more enemies who have a lot more experience but take a lot more damage as well. And like I said, after level 7, I usually count to about 5 enemies that I do. If you're beginning, you might even just fight until you get to level 8 here. That's about 7 enemies uh, that are the, the size of a Spectre or a Droll Magi or anything that gives you around 50 experience. So that's definitely something you can do. Played a little risky there. Um, I might not have killed him with that roll. He could outspeed me. So now we're just kind of kind of hope. But like I said, the shiny harp is the most important thing because you could always go to town and get herbs. And so I use the herb there. It's just precautionary. And in, in a real run, I probably wouldn't do that. But for a tutorial, for anything that you're learning on, go ahead and just use the herbs. Like you can just go to a town, you can go f refill on herbs. It's not worth having to walk back through Garen's tomb to come get the shiny harp. Uh, also note the shiny harp actually brings enemies to you. And it's actually down here a little bit faster to just play the shiny harp, get into an encounter, then walk around. For whatever reason, it's a very low encounter rate down here. So it's just faster to cast uh, or to call the shiny harp. And that was not an herb I meant to use. That's unfortunate. Usually you just fight until you die here quite honestly. And after five fights, I'll usually force a death. But for you, you can do however you want to do it. The herb was unintended, so now it's going to take a little bit longer to die, unfortunately. But normal turn, uh, we're just going to keep attacking until we, we kill the enemy. Nothing special here. I don't have any MP, but even if I did have MP, I wouldn't be doing any casting a fireball or anything. The occasional heal if I really wanted to get five, uh, five enemies in, but it's not that big of a deal otherwise. And so Droll Magi actually is working really well for us right here. He got us low HP, and that was our fifth fight. So after the next one, we're actually, or during this one, we're actually going to die and warp back to the castle. It works out perfect because we just need to refill on our MP, um, MP and HP, and then start the Golden Walk. So we get here, he's probably, yep, kills us in one hit, so no big deal. So that was all of it for this split. Uh, that was the Shiny Harp split, and that got you to basically the end. So we're going to warp out of here real fast. But that is it. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you subscribe to the channel, because I'll be updating the next few splits on this. Uh, but the next one will be Golem Walk. So uh, thanks for watching, and see you next time.